हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू दिस नेक्स्ट वीडियो ऑन नमेरिकल एनालिसिस इन द लास्ट वीडियो व्हाट वी हैव डन वी हैव डिस्कस्ड न्यूटन्स मेथड सो बेसिकली आई विल जस्ट राइट द समरी हियर यू वी हैव स्टार्टेड विद बाइसेक्शन मेथड देन वी हैव डन फिक्स पॉइंट आइट्रेशन मेथड एंड देन वी हैव डन न्यूटन्स मैथड and our reason for going from bisection to fixed point and to newton was that bisection was very slow so most of the times uh, uh, any new method is discovered when there are drawbacks for the previous existing method so bisection was very slow so we went to fixed point and then uh, in fixed point we have seen that uh, there is a choice of g and so much analysis is required and in newton's method newton is basically a special case of fixed point iteration method only so we have seen that newton's method is we claimed that it is fast claimed that it is fast but we did not prove it we will prove it in the coming videos claim that it is fast okay now let us now i am going to discuss second method so i should have a reason why why i am discussing this second method so let us uh, write down the formula for fu uh, newton so you had in newton pn plus 1 is equal to pn minus f of pn upon f dash pn now suppose your function is something like f of x is equal to x cube minus 7x plus 9x square plus log of 1 plus x square upon 1 minus x cube into e raised to power 7x square plus sin x plus cos x equal to 0 something uh, like this your function is now you see differentiating this function is hard because you have to you know deal with the gaussian rule and everything so differentiation is hard here differentiation is hard here and we want to uh, get rid of that differentiation we we don't want to have a formula where we we have to differentiate that function so sometimes your problem is such that you don't want to differentiate so i want to rewrite this formula obviously i will have to pay some cost but i want to rewrite this formula so that i don't have to find out this derivative for that what you can do you can uh, just go back to the definition of f dash pn what is the definition of f dash pn definition of f dash pn is limit pn minus 1 going to pn f of pn minus 1 minus f of pn upon pn minus 1 minus pn okay or you can write the other way you can write it as you can write it as I'm sorry you can write it as f of pn minus f of pn minus 1 upon pn minus pn minus 1 limit pn minus 1 going to pn so this is the definition of f dash pn if i don't put this limit if you don't put this limit then f dash pn is approximately equal to f of pn minus f of pn minus 1 upon pn minus pn minus 1 so your formula this is newton's formula which is pn is equal to pn minus 1 minus f of pn minus 1 okay let me write it other way not you write it in terms of pn so you have pn plus 1 is equal to pn minus f of pn upon f dash pn i can replace this f dash pn with this quantity so i will have pn plus 1 is equal to pn minus f of pn upon f of pn minus f of pn minus 1 into pn minus pn minus 1 so this is the formula where you don't need a derivative you don't need a derivative but of course because you are approximating here so error will be more as compared to newton's method so number of uh, uh, iterations required will be more so there are two things to note for second method this is your second method and why this is called second method i'll tell you uh, second method uh, the first thing to note is you don't have to compute the derivative you don't have to compute the derivative and one more thing is you see on the right hand side you are seeing pn and pn minus 1 so you have to start with two initial guesses what do you mean by that 
for example if i want to compute p2 then i have p1 minus f of p1 into p1 minus p0 upon f of p1 minus f of p0 so i should start with p0 and p1 already because for example in newtons you only start with p0 and then you compute p1 and p2 and so on here what you will do you will start with p0 and p1 start with p0 and p1 and then go for p2 using p0 and p1 then go for p3 using p1 and p2 then go for p4 using p2 and p3 and so on i'll do one problem and now before doing a problem let us see why this is called secant method why this is called secant method we know what is the secant line if you have any curve then a line joining two points on that curve is called secant line for that curve so this is your curve and this particular line is called secant line now in this method since we are looking for the root of f of x is equal to 0 it means that we are looking for where the graph of the function f of x intersects with x axis so this is a point we want to find out suppose you start with two initial guesses so this is your initial guess p naught and this is your point f of p naught p naught comma f of p naught and another point suppose you are starting with p1 so this is your point p1 comma f of p1 so you draw a secant line right the equation of this line you know two two points so equation of the secant line is y minus p1 upon y x minus sorry f of p1 y minus f of p1 upon x minus p1 is equal to f of p1 minus f of p0 upon p1 minus p0 and if i want to find out this point where it intersects x axis you put y is equal to 0 if you put y is equal to 0 you will see x is equal to p1 minus f of p1 upon f of p1 minus f of p0 into p1 minus p0 so you just put y x y is equal to 0 and this is the value of x you will get and we are calling it as p2 so it means that this particular point is your p2 so you have started with p1 and p0 and this is your p2 so because secant line intersects x axis as p2 then you go for p1 and p2 using p1 and p2 this is your point p2 comma f of p2 and this is your point p1 comma f of p1 you draw another secant line so this is your p3 and then similarly this is your again draw a secant line this is p4 you see you are moving closer to the exact root p you are moving closer to the exact root p so that is why this is called secant line because every time we are drawing a secant line okay so let us do one problem question is you have this problem use the secant method to find the solution of x is equal to cos x basically you have to find uh, find its solution correct to 10 decimal places correct to 10 decimal places using newton and secant method this is your question newton and secant method okay so you suppose uh, i am trying this with newton's method first so i told you for newton's method you should start with an initial guess so what is your initial guess for that either you go for uh, a and b or you can just draw the graph this is the graph of cos of x and this is the graph of y is equal to x so this is the point i am looking for there are so many roots one of the root is here so this is the point i am looking for so i know that between 0 and pi by 2 there are there is a root between 0 and pi by 2 there is a root so I can start with my initial guess as pi by 4. Is the thing clear? Because between 0 and pi by 2 there is a root. Why? Because I am looking for the intersection of these two curves. This is the curve y is equal to cos x and this is the curve y is equal to x. So between 0 and pi by 2 there is a root. So I am starting with my initial guess as p naught is equal to pi by 4. 
okay now what is my f of x f of x is x minus cos x so basically you have to write your equation as x minus cos x is equal to 0 and this will work as your f of x so my newton's formula is x uh, pn plus 1 is equal to pn minus f of pn upon f dash pn so what is f dash f dash is 1 plus sin x so you have pn plus 1 is equal to pn minus pn minus cos of pn upon 1 plus sin of pn now you start with an initial guess p0 is equal to pi by 4 then you put p1 is equal to pi by 4 minus pi by 4 minus cos of pi by 4 upon 1 plus sin pi by 4 now you compute it in your calculator make sure that your calculator is set in radians because everything is in radians so if you compute this you will see this quantity is 0.73953613337 now you go for p2 p2 is your p1 minus p1 minus cos of p1 upon 1 plus sine of p1 this quantity is equal to 0 0.739085178 then go for p3 P3 is going to be 0.73908513332. Then go for P4, it is 0.739085133. You see, in the fourth iteration, because every time we have to see whether you have 10 to the power minus 10 accuracy or not. You see here, 10 digits should be should be same. We don't have here. Here also the 10 digits are not same. Here 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. 10 digits are same. So at 4th iteration, we got our answer in case of Newton's method. Now let us go for second method. So if I go for second method, my problem is same x minus cos of x is equal to 0 and the only thing is I need to have two initial guesses so what I am doing here is again I draw the graph and I know that between 0 to pi by 2 there are there is a root so I will take one initial guess as pi by 4 another initial guess any number in this interval I have taken 0 0.5 but this is not unique you can take something else also okay now using this p0 and these are my initial guesses these these are not unique and you have to decide these guesses so p2 is going to be p1 minus f of p1 into p1 minus p0 upon f of p1 minus f of p0 and your f of x is x minus cos x just insert the values you will see p2 is 0 0.736384138 then similarly using p1 and p2 you compute p3 this is going to be point seven three nine zero eight five one three nine two. Then P four is going to be point seven three nine zero eight five one four nine three. P five is going to be point seven three nine zero eight one five three three two. And P six is going to be point seven three nine zero eight five one three three two. You see at fifth. Uh, sixth iteration at sixth iteration we got our answer so obviously we got the same answer but number of iterations are more in case of second method and that we expect also because we know that in second method we have introduced one more error that is when we approximate the derivative with the you here you are approximating the derivative so as compared to Newton's method, you have introduced more error in second method. So number of iterations are expected to be more in case of second method. So this was all about second method.